Welcome to EPG Padashala. I am Dr. P.P. Ajay Kumar, Professor of English, School of Distance Education, University of Kerala. Today we will discuss two important poets of the 1930s, Auden and Spender. And this come under the paper 20th century English literature. Auden and Spender were part of a group of poets known as Pink Poets. Apart from Auden and Spender, Louis McNish and C. D. Lewis also were part of this group. They were also known as the poets of the 1930s. One of the important features of this group is that they responded to the social issues of the time and had a kind of commitment to the cause of the poor. The common characteristics of this group are the innovative experimental style and the intellectual nature of their poetry, the absence of a kind of emotional outburst that is present in Dylan Thomas and their political involvement with communism. It is true that they were influenced by both Marx and Freud and their common identity was reflected in their cynicism and satire. Their poetic style was greatly influenced by imagism, French symbolism and earlier poets like Hopkins and contemporary poets like Eliot. The social outlook of this group to a certain extent was influenced by Marxism and the most important threat of the time was the emergence of fascism in Europe and they opposed the fascist doctrines and addressed the social, political, economic concerns of the poor people. W. H. Auden is one of the major figures of this group and his collections of poetry titled Poems appeared in 1930, the orators appeared in 1932. The Dance of Death in 1933. These collections of poetry show influence of Freud and Marx and their ideology and these poems respond to the contemporary issues, political, economic as well as social. W. H. Auden was a stylist as well. His poetry is known for the stylistic and technical excellence, its engagement with moral and political issues, the variety of tone that he uses and the experiments in the form and content were all the striking features of his poetry. He was even known as the spiritual physician of his generation. Auden wrote about social and political issues but at the same time he also wrote about love religion, morals, and the interpersonal relationships. He was very much concerned about the individuals who lose their identity in a capitalist society. He wrote in a style that can be described as fragmentary. His poems are full of concrete images, visual images, as well as auditory images and the language that he used was colloquial in nature. The 1930s was a turbulent period in the history of the world, mainly because of the war. The First World War has created havoc in Europe. The Second World War uh, actually destroyed Europe. We find Auden's poems published in the 1930s responding to this turbulent period. He addressed the contemporary issues and tried to reveal the shallowness of the European civilization. Auden's poetry sometimes becomes very cerebral, intellectual in nature, but on some other occasions it is very evocative and very honest, we can say. He is renowned for addressing the issues of his day in a 
very moving and relevant manner. Basically, it could be said that Auden had an eye for the real and he was able to capture the real experiences of that time in a manner in which no other poet was able to do. Auden's later poems were all very popular. The Shield of Achilles, published in 1955, City Without Walls, published in 1969, Epistle to a Godson, published in 1972, Thank You, Fog, published in 1974, include the reflective poems and we find that the later poems also contain the same kind of fervor that he showed in the early poems. Like many other intellectuals who had left leanings at that time, Auden also moved away from the communist movement after the pact between Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. It was actually disillusioning for Auden and the left intellectuals at that time. And Auden died in Vienna, Austria on September 29, 1973. The next point that we are going to discuss is Stephen Spender, who also belonged to the same group. Spender had a similar kind of poetic career, just as Auden. His poetry was intellectual in nature. It was unemotional and at the same time it showed a kind of empathy with the essential human condition. What distinguishes Spender's poetry is the combination of his commitment to the left-wing political ideology and at the same time he also expressed his personal emotions and feelings through his poetry. He wrote many poems on war. He was an accomplished poet who used words with great care and we find that the linguistic virtuosity of Spender's poetry is commendable. The early collections of poems published by Stephen Spender are poems published in 1933, Vienna published in 1934, Trial of a Judge and The Still Center. Apart from his uh, concern for social issues, he tried to express a kind of self-critical and compassionate approach in his poetry. Spender, in some ways, is a more personal poet than some of his associates. And uh, we find that in the later part, he became more autobiographical as well. So we find that Spender was a poet who tried to look at the issues and the concerns of the society and at the same time he tried to look into himself, his own personality and his own individual identity. The long poem by Spender, Vienna, originated out of the infamous attack on the Viennese workers in their own quarters. It was in May 1934. It happened in Austria and here Spender avoided all conceits, fables and symbols. This kind of a technique evidently put a greater strain on his thought and language and this poem gave rise to a misinterpretation of Spender's political and social faith. Another collection, 20 poems, published in 1930, shows a typical Spenderian conflict between his basic romanticism and his strong understanding of the harsh realities of society. This duality emerged from the center of his self. So it is clear that Spender had these two sides as a poet, the personal 
as well as the political. The still center is another collection of Spender's poems which is significant in this context. In the second phase of his career, he moved more towards his own personality. It was a kind of retreat, a journey into the self. We find that the poetic output of Spencer during this phase was devoid of the propagandist vein which was present in his earlier writings. And in the second phase, his poems were filled with the themes of love, self, horror, war, pity, and personal sorrow. The most important collections of poems published during the second phase was Ruins and Visions, published in 1942, Poems of Dedication, published in 1947, The Edge of Being, published in 1949, Collected Poems, published in 1955, Selected Poems, published in 1964, The Generous Days, published in 1969, Reason Poems, published in 1978, and Collected Poems, published in 1986. So basically, Spender emerges as a poet who is socially committed and at the same time exploring his own individual personality. He cannot be termed as an innovator as far as the style of writing is concerned. However, he handles words, images, rhythms and uh, the kind of powerful images and we find that his poems tried to express and explain the complex experiences of war, violence and destruction during his lifetime. One of his famous poems was an elementary school classroom in a slum. This particular poem is expressive of his social concern and it appeared in 1964 in the collection Selected Poems. This particular poem can be seen as the best example of Spender's political voice resonating through poetry. In this poem, Spender expresses his ideological positions on government, economics and education. The poem presents the students in a classroom and the students are all underprivileged and malnourished. The poem actually speaks about the attitude of the capitalist government towards the children belonging to the lower sections of the society. The government is supposed to supply equal opportunity to the children belonging to the lower classes. But in this classroom where the children from the slum studies, the facilities are minimal. So the point tries to present the class and the kind of discrimination that is prevalent in a capitalist society. This poem also addresses the issue of race. This is written during the time of civil rights movement in United States. So it was uh, a kind of response of the poet towards the racial discrimination in the United States of America. The poem, The Pylons, is a response to a very crucial theme which was addressed by many other poets in the past. It refers to the encroachment of the modern technological world to the innocent, serene countryside. We have seen that the romantic poets like William Wordsworth addressed the issue of the encroachment of the urban industrial culture to the serene and uh, pure village or the rural culture. So here 
the poet is addressing a similar issue. He presents the installation of a modern technological world and the reactions that it creates in a sleepy countryside. As a result of the publication of this poem, the creation of a term called pylon school or pylon poets and this term was used to describe this group of poets. So this particular poem is considered to be a typical poem by Spencer. The pylons referred in this poem carry the energy for building the cities of the future. But at the same time, it destroys the calmness and the serenity of the countryside. So the poet is actually responding to this particular issue. The poet loves the countryside and he never wanted to spoil the beauty of the countryside and we find that at the same time the modern science, its inventions, the development of technology all are admired by the modern man. So what the poet tries to do is to express his concern for the transformations that happen in the beautiful serene village as a result of technological advancements. He wails for what is being lost as a result of development and the pylons stand out against the sky like whips of anger. That is how he describes it. The village has its own hidden source of energy and power and strength but at the same time these pylons to a certain extent destroy that energy and it brings in a new kind of energy which destroys the old one. Similar to W. H. Auden, Stephen Spender also moved away from the communist movement as a result of Stalin's pact with Hitler in 1939. He was very much disillusioned by the Russian experiment of communism. And he responded to this issue through a book of essays, The God That Failed, and it was published in 1949. Stephen Spender died at the age of 86, and throughout his long career, he has successfully responded to the issues of his contemporary society. So far we have seen two eminent poets of the early 20th century, W. H. Auden and Stephen Spender. Both of them were similar in many ways. They were poets who were very sensitive and they responded to the contemporary social and political issues and both of them had communist leanings and both of them moved away from uh, communist sympathies as a result of the pact between Stalin and Hitler. So they are similar as far as their response to issues are concerned and they actually generated a new way of looking at the world because unlike the modernists who are very objective in their approach, these poets were a kind of a mixture of objective intellectual approach as well as personal emotional approach. They tried to combine the characteristics of 
older poetry as well as the contemporary poetry more than that what is most striking in these poets is their humanism and their commitment to the cause of the people so i hope you have got a general idea about the poets of the 1930s and you will be able to learn more by reading books that is given in the section for further reading thank you